darkness. And these people has already followed Jesus for a little while now. He just, he just getting on the back end of it. And they go out into a huge area. And Jesus asked his disciples, he says, have you have anything to where we can feed these people? He said, I don't want to send them away, at least they faint in the way. He said, we have nothing. But there's a lad here that has got two fish with five loaves. You know, they didn't have nothing to offer. The disciples didn't. But this lad had something to offer. And this just wasn't a coincidence that he showed up here because he had something to offer that Jesus could use to feed this 4,000 people. You see, what have we brought Jesus today to offer somebody? What have we brought today that you could feed somebody that's, that's greater than any number that's here in this crowd? And it goes on. As this little lad is being brought to Jesus, Jesus has asked him, can I borrow your two fish and your five loaves? He gives them to Jesus. Jesus begins to break them, and this little lad now is seeing Jesus do these things. You know, when you tell somebody, like a, especially a little child, that you're going to borrow something from them, they are expecting to receive something. Yeah. And this, this lad, it's just like our children, when we tell them that we're going to take them to Walmart and buy them something, they're, they're expecting to see something. They're expecting to receive something. Right. Well, this little lad, he is expecting now to see something, that, what Jesus is going to do with these two fish and these five loaves. As Jesus begins to break this fish and these loaves, this little lad's looking at this. And, he's got, and Jesus has got these men lined up here with all these baskets. He's got 12 baskets, one for each disciple. And now Jesus is loading up these baskets, and he's telling these men to go out and feed the people. And after everybody had ate, after everybody was full, this little lad is looking at his little basket, and it's empty. And I believe Jesus looked at this little lad and says, don't worry, you're not going home empty. Amen. You're not going home empty. Because what you have brought, what you have given me to use, is going to be more than enough for you to take home. And now, this, now Jesus is loading up this little basket. He's just not placing stuff in there. He's pressing it down. He, he's putting more in there, and he's just pressing it down until it's running over now. You see, that's what Jesus is telling us in his word. He said, if you give, he said, I'll give it to you, pressed down, running over. But this little lad now, he's picking up this basket, and he's going home now. He gets home, and his mom is looking at him. He said, Mom, I've got something to tell you. He said, I went to the marketplace. But before that, she said, where did you get all this stuff? Where did you get all this bread and this meat? He said, Mom, I've got something to tell you that I did just like you told me to do. I went to the market. And I got the fish. I got the bread just like you told me to do. But when I came out of the marketplace, I saw this huge crowd. And I began to follow out of curiosity, seeing what was going on. And I saw this man take what I had. And he began to feed all these people. And now mom is so excited about what she has heard and what she sees in her house that she cannot wait for her husband to get home. Now she's got to go tell somebody. She's got to run out to the field or, or to the to the work area where this man is and tell him to come home and now he's coming home before his day is in. Because they're so excited about what they have saw. Because one little lad was paying attention to what was going on. Now he's got his mom excited, he's got his dad excited and now they cannot wait to go and find this man called Jesus. You know, this is where the church needs to be at right now. We need to be so excited. Come on. We need to be so excited about what's going on in the house of God that we cannot get, we cannot get out of this place in time enough to tell somebody about what's going on. 
If you want to, if you want people to come to church, if you want people to fill this house up, do like the little lad did. Go tell somebody. Now mom and dad is looking for Jesus. If you want your people saved, go tell what's going on in the house of God. If you want the pews to fill, go tell somebody. Like the little lad, pay attention to what's going on. And you'll find something that you have brought that Jesus can use. And what you have brought, he's going to multiply that. And souls is going to come in. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord, for what we have brought in this house this morning that you can use, Lord, and take for your glory, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for where pe people and praise of worship center is going today. We thank you, Lord, that souls are coming in, dear God, because of the testimonies. And we ask you, Father God, to anoint ever who's ministering today, Lord. For a work, dear God, that can go out of this house, dear God, and can reach this community, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just stand up on your feet this morning. Let's go ahead and enter in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
something right here. if you'll press through.
our pastor doesn't have the will to go on, don't get me wrong, but I've heard that since him the entire time. Don't you know we need prayer? And we call upon our pastors all the time. Pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. Well, who prays for our pastors when they're tired? We remember that he's got, and, and our first lady have many miles to travel just to come and feed the sheep. Sometimes they need to be fed too. But as we go into battle this morning, I'm not sure who's bringing the message. But we need to pray for our pastor. Redeem that rest. The Bible says that we can redeem the times. I ask now that the Lord will allow our pastors to redeem the rest that they need to continue to feed us, to lead us into battle. So if, please, everybody, reach your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm still stuck on what Brother Mike said a while ago. You ain't going home empty. I want to sing that song again. Oh, the blood. Draw the pillow. What? <laughs> Draw the pillow. Well, find me a key. Play whatever you was playing a while ago. How many of y'all hear what the Lord said? I know that Mr. and Ms. Davis, I know y'all drive, and I know Mike and uh, 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 Rhonda and Sister Jane and Brother David drive. I don't know. Some of y'all just down the road, but how many of you know? Sometimes serving the Lord is, is, is just, it's tiring on your body. How I many of you know that? But aren't you glad that's why the Bible said his mercies are new every morning? I know we drive. I was sitting in camp, I may have already told you this, but I'm going to tell you again if I didn't. I was sitting in camp meeting in Graceville Thursday night a few weeks back, and the Lord began to deal with us, with me about us here at Graceville. And I promise you before God, I'm not telling you no lie. 
most every morning, most every morning. There have been a few that I've been kind of like Brother Dante didn't know what the Lord had need, but there have been some days like Monday I'll go home and I'll crash and I'll, I, I'm not working right now so I can relax. But most every day I get up, and this has never happened to me like this before, but I'll start on one side of the church or the other, and one by one I'll see your face. And I begin to go in prayer and call every name, everyone. I know where you sit, except for some that moved a little on me. But I call every one of your names. Because you know what? We're family. This is our church. This is our season. It's our time. But you know, sometimes the miles get t- long. Sometimes the drive gets hard or, 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 you know, gas gets expensive. But I was sitting in Graceville the other night and I told the Lord, I said, God, I'll drive to Graceville every day of my life if you'll just allow me the opportunity to feed and to feed your people well. I don't want to just give you a nugget. I don't want to just give you a little band-aid over your boo-boo. Honey, I'm not interested in that. I'm looking for God to raise up warriors and people and men and women that'll stand and look the devil square in the face and say, you thought you won, but baby, it ain't over and you ain't got the victory this time. I know that there are people in this house. I prayed for some of you. I've seen your posts on the internet. I've talked personally with some of you but I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what it looks like it only matter what it ends up to be and whatever the enemy is trying to do to wear you out or to discourage you or to get you to throw in the towel honey I'm here to tell you don't even consider it anymore focus your eyes on him because there's nothing any more important than what he's done for us but guess what because of what he's done for us there's a reward waiting for us Pastor, I'm tired today. Guess what? I told my wife, I said, I ain't even going to grab the mic today. She was going to preach. And Brother Dante, what you don't know, 2 Kings is what she was going to preach on. I don't know if we're going to get to it or not yet. But I want to encourage, let me help you real quick. Y'all going to have to hear this one more time since I got the mic. I was speaking a while ago before church. I got a, I got a, I caught this guy on video last night. I've never seen him before. He's an ex-Satanist. His name is John Ramirez, Ramirez. And he was talking. I want you to hear this, church. How many of y'all heard me say this? Or you've heard it before. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little hands, what you do. This ex-Satanist said last night on a TV uh, broadcast on YouTube I was watching, he said, what you don't realize is, as a Satanist, as a witch or a warlock, all they needed was one negative word to be spoken by anybody, whether it be a believer or not. All they needed is one negative word, and they had the access and the open door to come in and to, to attack you. That's why we need to teach our children what they need to see and what they need to watch and what they don't need to see and where they don't need to go. I know this world says this is acceptable, and I know the world says that's acceptable. I got a video the other day, God forbid, and Jana sent me a video uh, some where if it came from that a bunch of uh, 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 homosexual folks have released a song. Any of y'all seen that? They took it down. They released a song that said, we're coming for your children. San Francisco Gay Men's Choir. San Francisco Gay Men's Choir. So I'm told. Lord, I pray for the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir. How many of you understand the love of God can set them free from that abomination? I declare. How many of you know God said I would that none should perish? You know, I don't hate the sinner. I just hate the sin. And I'm here to tell you, I've drawn a line in the sand. I don't know what you're going to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hello. I'm declaring that they're not going to have my children. They're not going to have your kids. They're not going to have But They have unleashed a video. And they unleashed a, a message to the world that we're going to conform your kids and we're going to co- convince them that they need. Honey, I'm here to tell you, the Word of God is still the Word of God. The power of God is still the power of God. And I hear you, if there's enough power in heaven to convert an ex-Satanist to become a preacher of the Word of God, there's still enough power to save gay men out in San Francisco or where. and there's enough power of God right up in this house right now to meet your every need. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sing it.
it with me one time. Everybody say, oh. oh. Lord, for the whitewashing, ever cleansing, all powerful blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and give God the worship in this house. He's moving in this place today. He's flowing in this house now. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to break the mold of religion. I came to tear down the walls of the enemy, and I came to see the victory portrayed in your heart and in your life this morning. I didn't drive all this way for nothing. I drove all this way for something. And I ain't leaving hungry. Amen. Is that your mic? Oh, I got the wrong mic, so I said. I want to tell you something, church. Uh, uh, get ready, and I'm probably going to let you preach if the Lord allow me. Oop. Hey, Brother David, look at there. It snuck up out of my pocket. Well, I didn't even intend to, y'all. By the way, I don't know if we still got these out. But how many of y'all had, how, how had an issue in your, in your body? Just, if you don't want to raise your hand, just grunt. Mm. It's just, somebody, said, somebody said, you know you're old when your body sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> hey, Amen. You know, I, I got up the, out of bed. I, I went, to, I, I was praying for brother in the church. Me and him been conversing all week long. And to God be the glory, I'm going to just say, brother, if you're watching today, you know who you are. And I'm saying to you, by the way of the camera, brother, the Lord is with you. And God's going to still bring, and the victory is still ours. He and I, but he knows who he is, and we've been talking. But I've been praying. I spent more time. I told somebody. Actually, I told my wife. I think I told my daddy. Yesterday, I had to go all the way to, no, Friday. I had to go to Niceville to pick up. Uh, we got blessed with another couch. I got blessed. I got a, a, a freezer on the way. <laughs> I mean, how many of you know for long we're going to have a full house on both houses? God's just pouring out blessing. But how many of you know that's just material things? I'm looking for the spiritual blessings that be poured out. I'm looking for the sons and daughters of God to raise up and walk in the calling that they're called and gifted and anointed to. By the way, let me tell you real quick. I, let me go back to this. Well, let me finish this. I woke up yesterday and I was kind of weary. 
and I reached in the truck this morning as I got out of the church, out of the truck at the, pro at the property, and I stuck these in my pocket. How many of y'all know what these say? Have any of y'all, any of y'all got any of these? Raise your hands if you've got one. Any of y'all got the, the red or the white? I don't know how many red ones we have. I don't know, but Brother David and Sister Jane, and that they blessed us with them. What is it? I can't see. Is it white? It's white. Okay, we got the white ones. How many of y'all know the white one says? Did y'all read it? Let's read it real quick. Because we're going to just obey the Lord. This is what the Lord said. We can end you preach in a minute. Acts 19 and 11 says it like this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body. Somebody say from his body. Paul's body. Paul's body. Were brought unto the sick. Handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And here's the part I like. And the evil spirits went out of them. See, uh, there, was an, there was such an anointing. Oh, God, help me now. I don't want to preach right here right now. But there was such an anointing on Paul. There was such an anointing on the, the man of God that even his shadow healed people. Come on, somebody. I, I, walk, I walk through the hospital sometime. I go to visit people, and I promise you before God, I do it near about every time. I think I do it every time. But I'll walk down that hall, and I'll look in those rooms. I'm just nosy like that. And I see families, some of them are hurting, some of them are crying, some of them are praying, some of them are just sitting there, just existing. And then I'll just say, Lord, touch them. Lord, touch them under my breath. I want it. And then I'll do this, and I'll turn around and look to see if anybody's following me. Because if God could do it for Paul, God could do it for Keith. That's good. And God can do it for you. I'm telling you, church, I preached this a while back. It's time for us to realize we got to quit living the low life living that the world has given us. And we need to start living the high life that God has afforded us to do. And the only way you're going to do that is when you start walking in the anointing and you start abiding in the presence of an almighty God. Let me help you. You can't give enough money to do it. The sons of Sceva proved that, didn't they? Y'all remember the sons of Sceva? Let me buy that thing. Let me, I want that power. I want the honey. It don't come no other way. It comes by being in the presence of God like we're doing this morning when the waves of glory begin to hover over the house and when the waves of glory, you can, I, I, I told somebody, you can have it happen to you in your car driving. You can have it happen at your house while you're sitting around. Honey, I'm going to tell you, turn off your Facebook, turn off your TV and start putting your face in the holy book of God's word and start filling your mind with the things of God and you will see something begin to change. Woo! Hallelujah! But let me go to the next one. Because all the blood and the prayer of agreement is the red one. If you ain't got one, if we'll get some more. And he said this, and again I say unto you that if any two of you agree on earth, y'all know this? See, some of y'all know it, but you don't live it. You quote it, but you don't walk it. Well, don't get me started. Again, I say, if any two of you will agree as touching anything on earth that they shall ask, it shall be done of them, uh, shall, excuse me, shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven, wherefore where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Brother, Sister Davis, the two, they can be driving down the road in their car and begin to agree on anything, and God just, whoo, and show up. That's his promise. That's his word. God will not break his word. God will not break his word. God will not break his word. And then the next one said, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James said it. So I grabbed both of these this morning. And I've did to myself just like I've did to some of y'all. How many of y'all believe in anointing and prayer cloths and all of that stuff? And so I put it in my pocket and I told Brother Dante, you just don't know how right. I told Angie, I said, I'm not sick. I'm just exhausted. I'm just, you hear it in my voice. You know, I, I get up and I, uh, this morning I, I said, I almost overslept. We didn't get to come up last night. I wasn't feeling good. But how many of you understand? It's one thing to face the battle. It's another thing to know what you need to do in the midst of the battle. See, I know the Bible said, and I, I, the Lord gave me this one scripture. If y'all can find it for me, John 16, 33, you've heard me say it over and over. But I'm going to say it one more time just for you today. Amen. Somebody flip it up there real quick. Anybody know what John 16, 33 says? In this world. 
Anybody with me? Some of y'all quit on me? The anointing leave the building? I don't think so. <laughs> In this world, you shall have. Look at the last part of it. John 16, 33. It's on the screen now. I, I, we're helping you cheat now. These things I've spoken to you, Jesus said in words of red, that you might have, what did she sing about this morning? What did we start on? Oh, God, now look how God's putting this together right here, right now. And I'm not supposed to be the one speaking. I'm just supposed to be the one receiving prayer when I came up here from the Word of the Lord. But look at this. What is God saying to us for the second time today in this house? Somebody in this house needs peace. I can assure you that. God would not let us start off singing about it and come across it right now. And you think that this is just a coincidence, honey. God don't work like that. God don't work like that. God don't move like that. God don't move like that. Somebody been walking through it this week. Because that's why you need peace today. These things I've spoken to you that you can have peace. That in the world you shall have. But be of good. So aren't you glad it doesn't stop there? Well, all I've got, like the, do like the donkey Eeyore on the Winnie the Pooh. Oh, Lord, you know. Y'all watch Winnie the Pooh back in the day? Boy, uh, you still do? I do too, brother. I'm glad you admitted it so I can agree with you. I tried to get Jace hooked on it. He ain't real interested in Winnie the Pooh. Disney came out with a movie a while back, a few years ago. I had to watch it. It's part of my childhood, amen? But you know what? I don't want to be Eeyore. Well, you know the Lord. He might bless me one day, someday. If I just hold on to the very end, bless his holy name. Y'all have heard that before, haven't you? Come on, y'all know I'm meddling a little bit, but you know what I'm talking about. The devil's been on. Y'all have heard it. I ain't going to even go there. But the Bible said, in this world, you will have it. We prophesied the other day. I, listen, I don't ever say nothing from this mic under the prophetic word of God that God don't tell me to say. I don't conjure it up in my head. I don't write it down and prescribe it out like a movie script. No, honey. When the Lord says for me to do it, I do it right then. And if you don't like what God has for me to say to you by his spirit, then you take it up with God. But I promise you, everything I prophesy, I do it by the word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. But just a week or so ago, we prophesied that Sister Jane was going to be receiving a man mighty manifold blessing of God and the, the intercessor was going to rise up and I said she was telling me this morning she said son, that I said in her kitchen she was going to receive a blessing well the other day in her kitchen she slipped or fell or something and busted her head open have you even know that don't seem like a blessing yeah well come on you want to preach it did you hear what she said it was a miracle Wait a minute. Let's understand where we are, church. In this world, we will have tribulation. But God took a trial and turned it around to a miracle. Right there. Right here sitting in our midst this morning, there's a trial that was turned into a miracle in the midst of the world where we're having tribulation. How does God get the glory from anything if you and I don't ever go through stuff? Here, come, come, stand right here, stand right here. Yeah, sit right here. Come on, since you up front. Sit right here. Come here, Brother Dante. Hurry, hurry, quick. I need some big boys. Come here, Chris. She's your wife. Stand by her. Stand by your man. Come on, hurry up. You slow, but you're worth waiting on. Turtle beat you here. Come on. Hurry up. Stand over there on that side. You stand right there. Dun. What's the theme from Jeopardy or something? Come on, Chris. Jay, Dustin, take his guitar. Hurry up. Facebook people are waiting to know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> Unleash him and let him go, Lord. That's all right. Okay, well, come over here because people can't see me on the camera. That's fine. Sit right here. Are we good right here? Sit right here, right here. Sit right here. All right, Dante, you stay right there. Chris, you stand in the front. Come here, Justin. See, I pick a little guy. Have me even know me and Dante and Chris, we some big boys. You stand over there. Any of y'all ever play Red Rover when you was a kid? Hello? Or what's the other thing? Catch the flag or capture the flag or whatever, something about the flag. Don't they stand up here by Chris? Yeah, like, like we know what we're doing. How many, how many of you understand? Some of us want God to do us like Marlene is right now. 
How many of you understand? There's an adversary that's coming to, to, to Red Rover take her, and there's a wall of folk right up here to protect her. Hello, somebody. Now, listen, everybody would want the complete, total, 100% protection of God so that nothing would ever happen to you. Wouldn't we all like to have that? Say amen. But how many of you know sometimes that don't happen? But here's what does happen. 100% of the time, God will always protect her and you as well from any attack that the enemy has. Why? Because in this world, you will have tribulation. But it doesn't stop there in the middle of your tribulation. He said, but get yourself in order and begin to get yourself of a right mindset. Because he said, in the midst of your trouble, I'm going to bring you good cheer. But not only am I going to bring you good cheer, I'm going to bring you overcome. I'm going to pull you over. I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to bring you over. She said, you, some of y'all saying, Lord, when are we going to get over? When you rise up and stand in faith. Well, maybe one day God will bless me. No, not like that. That ain't how you do it. As for me, it's the only scripture God gave me. You want a sermon, this is it. John 16, 33, y'all can sit back down and let Marlene go back so she can hide behind the wall. Amen? Ian, let me, let me ask you real quick. Raise your hands. I already know the answer to this. By the way, let me help some of y'all. Most 90% of the time, I never ask you a question I don't already know the answer to. I'm just that way. If I ask you most of the time, I already know or have a clue. I just want you to approve it with me, to get an agreement. Why? I asked Brother Chris about stuff around the church here, how we do this, how we do that. I already got an idea. I just want to hear what Chris has to say. I want to see if Chris is on the same page as I am. Hello? But how many of you right now would raise your hand and say, in this world, I have had tribulation? Well, let's, let's do it the easy way. Put your hand down. Raise your hand if you have not had tribulation in this world y'all look around if any hand is up please go sit by them for the rest of the year the rest of your life matter of fact because why because the promises of God are yes and amen when God releases his word he said it like this in the book of Numbers. I am not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I need to repent. Have I not spoken it or said it out of my word? Will I not bring it to pass? I don't know when God's going to bring it to pass. I don't know how God's going to bring it to pass. I just know that God's going to bring it to pass. I know that joy comes in the morning. I've wept all night long and so have you. You've been heartbroken and, and dismayed and discouraged and depressed and yet still you found on the way somehow to climb yourself up and climb yourself out of that pit and stand up on your feet again and give God the glory. I don't know how, but God give you the strength to do it. But if he ever did it one time, I promise you he can do it again. See, the problem is, oh, let me finish this. This satanic priest said this. If I can ever get anybody to say one negative word, that gives me access. And he said this. He said, when we would pray, watch this. He said that when he was eight years old, I told y'all some of them back a while ago. He said when he was eight years old, he was raised in the satanic church. He had a satanic baptism. He had a satanic marriage. He dedicated his daughter to Satan when she was first born. He was all up in it big time. I mean, oh man, it was wild and weird stuff he was saying. But he said, let me help you understand. He said, while you were going to church on Sunday for two hours, he said, I was going to church every night from 7, a, uh, 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. Now let that sink in just a minute, church. And we call a prayer meeting on Wednesday night once a week and can't get two people to show up. And yet the satanic folk are meeting at nighttime 
and staying up all night long and staying up all morning long, so he said, and you wonder why there's no power in the church. Honey, I've got news for you. There's still power in the name of Jesus. There's still power in the King of Kings, but what there is to be is some power in me and you, and it only comes when we plug into the power source. Well, I wasn't preaching, but I'm going to give this a go for a minute here. When we pastored a church in Panama City, our daycare caught on fire. And we had to shut it down, shut church down. We was having church in the living room for a couple of weeks. And the power company came out to rewire the house. I mean, the church. Y'all ever seen the power lines, the wires? They like that thick. Y'all ever seen them? Have y'all ever, anybody ever touched them? Or, or not, not while they were charged up, I mean, but... <laughs> You wouldn't be here if you touched them while they were charged. But, have, you know, they're very stiff. They're very brittle. They're very hard to move and bend. And I watched these Gulf Power guys go in there and wire up the power panel on the outside. By the way, y'all need to thank God. By the way, let me just say, we got blessed this week. Somebody fixed our power panel with all the mess. Now we can get stuff straightened out. And get the, you need to just stick your head in there and say what God did. Thank God for fixing the power. Brother Jimmy Crowley from Panama City, we bless them in the name of the Lord. Brother Jimmy, if you're watching me, God bless you. Thank you for the blessing. But this power coming from Gulf Power, he went in there and he put them big old wires up and he had them big old lug nuts. And he tranked it down. And me and a couple of the guys were standing out there one that day. And I was ready to see that light come back on. And the guy, he signaled to the guy on the pole. And the guy on the pole, all he did was take a little stick and flip one latch like you'd hit that light switch. And power was generated. Power was designated. Uh -huh. Power was sent forth. Hello, somebody. And when you and I get in the presence of the most holy God and we say, have your way, Lord, and Holy Ghost shows up on the inside of this house and on the inside of you and me, and all God does is flip the switch and the power of God begins to flow and the word of God begins to come and the anointing of God begins to move and you and I get blessed and touched and healed and saved and delivered and overjoyed and weeping and shouting and dancing and all those things happen. Why? Because you've connected yourself to the power source. But here's the thing. When that guy flipped that switch, there was a tray about that long and about that wide. And those wires come down and they run like a snake to get to the to the to the to go into the building. When that boy flipped that switch, Somebody had a loose connection. And I don't know how much voltage comes through there from there. Do you know? It's a bunch, just say it like that. I don't, know, I don't even know what split phase means. I know what two phase means. But when he flipped that switch, that power had to go somewhere. And when it didn't find, he had forgotten to tighten one of those lug nuts. No, 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 it was, it was a skin. The skin was, had a cut in it. And power shot, he nicked it, that's right. Power shot out of that thing, and that wire went to flopping around like a snake and flip-flopping like a fish, and Keith went running. I ain't lying to you, baby. That thing, like that. I'm like, I ain't standing for this. I'll watch it from over across the road. And I ain't kidding you. I'm sitting there. God is my witness. All that Gulf Power guy did, he took out some black electrical tape. Hold your hand out. And he took that little wire, and he just went around it, and around it, and around it, and around it, and he put it back in place. And he flipped that switch on, and not another spark happened. That power went where it was supposed to go. And here's the point of it. Some of you need to realize you connected to the source, but you've had a little nick in life. You've had a little problem in life. You've had a little tribulation in life. You've had a little sorrow in life. Come on, let me talk to you. You've had some of you, some of you may have had a little more than a little. Hello? 
And it doesn't matter how much you had. Whether that nick was a little nick or it was a big long nick. All that, that electrician did was he began to wrap that thing. And honey, when you have a nick in life or a cut in life or a heartbreak in life, it don't matter whether it's little or much. All you need to do is let the love of God begin to wrap his love and wrap his blood and wrap his heart and wrap his word and, and cover you. That's why the Bible said that the Lord encampeth round about those that he loved. He's wrapping you with his love. He's wrapping you with his word. He's wrapping with you with his promise. He's wrapping you with his anointing and power. You know, uh, brother, uh, brother Clint Brown used to sing a song that said, surround me, oh Lord. Any of y'all know that song? Did y'all sing it here ever? Surround me, oh Lord. Y'all know? Surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence fill this place. How many of you understand this morning? I feel the leading of the Spirit of the Lord saying, I'm here to surround you. I'm here to wrap you up. I'm here to solve the nicks and cuts in your life and the breakouts and the let outs of the power. And God's saying, some of us, uh, you know, we the, the Bible says we don't put old wine and new, I mean, uh, new wine and old wine skins. And why? Because it leaks out. Some of y'all could be called leaky saints. Amen. What'd you say? Oh, come on. I thought you said blood bought. Leaky saints. But all God's wanting to do is just say, let me hold you one more time. Hello? We had a situation this week that came up. And all we needed to do was just place a hug around somebody's neck. All we had to do was place a hug around somebody's shoulder. Honey, I'm here to tell you that the spirit of the living God who has already saturated this house all morning long, all he wants you to do is fellowship with him and let him love you. He gave his all for you. If he can save a satanic preacher, if he can save a, a, a blood, I mean a, a sin-filled, stricken a soul laying in a ditch on the side of the road, honey, he can touch you this morning. It don't matter what you've been facing or what you've been going through. There's still a God who's able to deliver you in the midnight. So here's the thing. We are headed on our way for revival. I got one with me. I heard it back there. If all you got to do is just let the devil run over you, your life is going to be miserable all your days. Hello? My, my baby brother, no, my brother that's right under me, he's a scrapper, he's a fighter. He's a, he's a pretty good dude when he's, you know, when he wants to be. I mean, as far as when he can fight. Back when he was young, I used to be playing football. We was little kids. I think I may have already told you this. But all of this used to be up here. I would, if you can imagine, use your biggest imagination. You know, some of y'all are chuckling over here. And I was, I worked out, I played football, was fullback, linebacker. I wasn't a lineman. I looked like a lineman, but I wasn't a lineman then. And one day, old boy come down to our house. My brother was about eight, 12 years old. I can't remember. He was young, but 14. This boy knocks on the door and he says, step outside this house. My brother being the kind of fighter dude that he is. All right, we'll go. He stepped out of the house. The boy hit him. Bam, right in the nose. Broke his nose. One shot. Broke his nose. Come running back in the house. And in blood dripping. You know how that goes. And his nose all messed up. His nose is still crooked today. Because of that thing. And here's the thing. All the while, I sat less than three feet away from him. All he had to do was say, hey, Keith. I need some help. But no, he took it on his own. And that's what some of us are doing in the house today. You're trying to take it on your own. And the Lord's saying, hey, Renee, all I need is let you let me have, help, help you. Hey, Chris, just let me help you. Hey, Sonia, let me help you. Hello? Hey, Amy, let me help you. Yeah, y'all hear me? Because why? In this world, you're going to have tribulation. If all it takes is one thing, oh, I heard the preacher say this. I heard the preacher say this. You think about this in the Bible. There were 10 plagues that came to Egypt. 
10. 10 plagues. And it wasn't enough to destroy God's people. Ten plagues were not enough to wipe out the army of God. But ten plagues they endured and ten plagues they suffered through. And yet we've had one pandemic and the church shut down. Come on, talk to me somebody. If all it takes is one tribulation to draw you out or to take you out, honey, you need to get another good foundation. I know you know that in the midst of a greatest hurricane, there are some buildings that have been able to stand all these high winds. Why? Because their foundation was deep and their foundation was secure and their foundation was strong. Honey, you can't live on one Sunday morning for two hours and expect God to be develop a warrior in you. Honey, you need to be in that prayer closet in the weekday. You need to be in that Bible in the weeknights. How many of you know? And you need to fill up yourself and build the foundation of God so that when the enemy comes, you say like, was it Peter or Paul said, none of these things move. I may fall, but I'm going to get back up. How many of you say, yes, Lord? Say it with me, John 16, 33. These things I've spoken unto you. Say it with me. These things I've spoken unto you. That in me you might have peace. Say it in him I have peace. Some of y'all need peace in your house. Some of you need peace in your marriage. Some of you need peace in your kids. Some of you need deliverance in your kids. Let me help you. Somebody said hallelujah. Yes Lord. Amen. But Jesus said in me you may have peace. In your kinfolk, how many of y'all got black sheeps in the family? I, I'm not saying we got one, but how many of you know that's how they label them? And I don't care whatever label you've been labeled with, how many of you know God's real good at removing labels? Help me, somebody. In me, you shall have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But in me, you shall have peace. Let me say it again. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But in me, you shall have peace. In the world, you're going to have frustration. But in me, you're going to have peace. In, world, in the world, you're going to have uh, uh, discouragement. But in him, you will have peace. How many of you don't get it yet? How many more times do I got to say it yet before you get the realization of where you need to be? I don't need to be in the world. I need to be in him. Christ in us, the hope. Any of y'all know that scripture? Christ in us. On Christ the solid rock. We used to sing that song. Is that a hymn, Brother Davis? I don't know. Is that a hymn? On Christ the solid rock, on stand. On other ground is seeking sand. Y'all know that song? It's time if we're going to be. And I love saying this. We're the church on the hill in Gracefield. I just love saying it. I just get it. I, I just... I quit saying little. Y'all didn't hear me say little, did you? We're the church on the hill in Gracefield. I think we might. Did you just say it? What did you just say? I was fixing. You beat me to the punch. I think I'm about ready to start saying we're the mighty church on the hill in Gracefield. Did you hear me? I'm the mighty man of God in the church in Gracefield. You're the mighty woman of God in the church in Gracefield. You've got to begin to see yourself as who you. Matter of fact, Sonia. I get them wrong. Which one's the brown-headed, Alex or Renee? Renee's come in here this morning. How many of you know Alex and Renee? They, they look so pretty every day. I told them if I was only their age, I think I'd have me two girlfriends. You tell her I said so. I think them girls, I think the world of them. But little Renee said this morning, I said how pretty she was. And she said to me, she said, I have a crown. She said it, didn't she? I ain't making it up. She, and she didn't say it. She said it almost arrogantly. Or, or stubbornly. I don't know. The arrogant may not be the word. Whatever the word is. She was firm in it. Confident. Who said that? There you go. There you go. Thank you for preaching with me. She said, I have a crown. I said, do you really now? I said, well, maybe you need to wear it one day. Oh, <laughs> Oh, God, help me. I just felt that hit me. Y'all better pray. How many of you know that old song? We shall wear a robe and crown. So I said, baby, you need to wear it one day. She, I said, it'll match your dress. Look real pretty. I said, you do know you are a king's kid. Some of y'all need to get fitted for your crown. 
Some of y'all need to pick up your robe and crown. Get ready to receive your robe and crown. Why? Because this tribulation that we're enduring in the earth is only but for a light season. Paul said it, our light affliction. That's how he said it like that. Have you understand? I don't care how much you go through. Matter of fact, let me put out an invitation to you, and I'll try to wind this down right here. This is what happens to me. Every time I get to mully grubbing, y'all know what that means? I didn't know if y'all knew what that word meant. Every time I felt like, oh, God, why is it me? And I'll go to God. And you know what the Lord says? Have they put you on a cross yet? Have they nailed you to a wooden stake yet with the nails? Have they stripped you naked and beat you bloody and merciless in front of a crowd of people yet? Have they put a spear in your side? Have they pulled your beard out yet? Have they spit on you yet? The Lord does it to me every time I get to whining. And then I have to answer, you know the answer. No, Lord, they haven't. He said, then get up and go on because I did and I paid it for you. So the next time you think, well, it's just a bunch. I know the life is tough. You know, life is hard. How many of y'all would say amen to some of that? But in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But if I'm in him in this world, I have peace. Because how many of you know this world is not my home? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not staying around to live in this man. If things continue and the church don't rise up and the government keeps going like they're going, how many of you know this is going to be a real sick world to live in one day? But aren't you glad I believe that Jesus is right on the edge about ready to blow the sound, the alarm, and have his bride call up? I believe we're so close. Honey, all you got to do is endure to the end and you shall be saved. I don't want to live in the mess if it keeps going like it's going. But I don't have to worry about that. Why? Because I have a promise. I've been assured that if I know him as Lord and Savior, he is my king and my all in all. I'm going to rise up when he shouts and I'm not going to stay here. I'm going up and I ain't going to have to deal with this no more. But here's the good part. How many of you got loved ones already over there? Two or three of you? Bible says, so shall we be caught up together with him in the air. And we're going to see our loved ones again. And we ain't ever going to leave them again. And we're going to worship together. We're going to live together. We ain't going to have to cry no more. We ain't going to have to complain no more. <laughs> How many of you say it's worth? There's a song I heard the other day. It said, heaven's going to be worth the journey. After a while, one of them Tommy Bates kind of camp meeting old school songs. But how many of you hear what I'm saying? In this world, this is all God spoke to me on the way up here this morning. I said, Angie, you preach. But how many of y'all know if it, <laughs> Angie knows, she sometimes, she, if I ever get the mic, it's not my fault, God. I wanted to be a singer and a musician. Y'all talk to God about it if you don't like me. <laughs> I'm, 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 you stuck with me. Amen. But hear this this morning, in this world, the thing that you're living in and you're standing on temporarily in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But in him, while I'm on this world, I have peace in this world. And if I don't have peace in this world in my tribulation, then something's wrong because the scripture's not wrong, amen? Did you hear me? The scripture's not wrong. God's not a man that he should lie. If any two of us agree, it shall be done. When's it going to be done, Pastor Keith? I don't know. I just know that it is. It's not a matter of when. It's a matter that it is. Amen? Amen? Let me just say, we're fixing to rise up. I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to call myself blessed. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to call revival in the house. Amen? Our founding father of this house and this ministry gave his life for revival. You've heard it said many times before I ever came here. And we are going to contend for revival. We're going to contend for fire. And I don't know about you, but I heard sounds of revival in this house this morning already during the worship. How many of you can say, I heard something moving, something stirring, something's changing. A church alive is worth the drive. I'll drive from Panama City as long as I have to drive. Why? Because I want to be where the fire's at. I want to be where the glory's at. I want to be where the presence of my I want to be where God you are. That's where I want to be. Stand up on your feet and give God the worship in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Don't be quiet about it either. 
<clears throat> you say, Brother Keith, I've fought a battle all week long. Well, praise him extra loud right now in the name of Jesus. Brother Keith, I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to just tell y'all right now, y'all be in prayer with us. Tonight, tonight we're leaving, going to Jacksonville. Angie's got to go back to Mayo Clinic for a procedure. We're going back Monday and Tuesday. We'll be over there. But I'm standing right here together. Can't Angie, come here right here right now quick. Come here. Me and you are standing here together right now before you people, our family, you folks, our kin. Y'all know we was kin? We are now. So we in agreement. I need one other person. Y'all, anybody in this house agree with me? We've been praying for this young lady right here to be healed. Men and women have prophesied she's going to be. March, wasn't it March? 2017. Six, anyway, whatever it was, March 2016, 2017. She had to have a surgery done. There's no cure for what they say she has. I don't know if, if y'all know this or not. Good time to let you know. Because I'm preaching on tribulation. Hallelujah, glory to God. I just felt that myself, okay? How many of you know you ain't walking alone? You ain't walking by yourself. Hello? But we got to go back and go through the procedure one more time. How many of you say, tomorrow, you may have to go through the procedure one more time? Sister Janice, tomorrow you might have to go through the tribulation one more time. I ain't prophesying. I ain't prophesying. I'm just saying we got to leave here tonight and go back over there to that hospital. And we got her in the best place that we know that we can put her in. And we got her in the, supposed to be a specialist. Doctor, what's his name? Ellie. Pepe. I call him Pepe. He's French or something like that. I can't understand what he says. But here's what I'm saying to you. I ain't standing here to preaching to you about something I ain't talking about walking through myself. Hello? So I pray for you, you pray for us. And we're going to go on this thing together because we are family. I got all my brothers and sisters with me. I can't sing that song, but whoever it was, y'all know who sang it. So we're just going to say this morning, in this world, we're going to have tribulation. But we ain't living in tribulation. Reach over and grab the hand of the friend of your loved one, your neighbor. If you, don't, if you don't see somebody holding a hand, reach back there and grab somebody else's hand. Sister Janice, uh, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Michael. I appreciate that. Because we are family. Brother Dante, yeah, grab over there. Brother Dante, slide over there and grab Amanda's hand. And Sonia, slide over here and grab somebody's hand. Amen. Now, Father, on the action of your word that I read a few minutes ago, if any two of us agree is touching any one thing, whew, God, we are agreeing right now by our joined hands, by our joined hearts. Father, I decree over this family, our family in Graceville, right now, Father, every husband and wife, every friend and every family member in this place, God, we decree that the tribulations of this world will not prevail over the men and the women of God. I declare that the troubles of life and the cares of life will not steal or rob or stuff out the move of God and the Spirit of God. I declare that, Father God, we are going to hold fast to the promises of God with faith, and we're going to stand in the promise of God, and we're going to carry on. God, we declare signs and wonders shall follow them that believe according to your word. Father, we say that the Holy Ghost fire begin to stir up in this house like never before. I declare that revival fire may ascend, descend upon this house like never before. I declare that God, that we would be the Joshua to take in the Moses generation into the promised land. That Father God, what Brother Greg Davis has established years gone by and what Brother Craig Davis maintained to the time that he left, I declare that there's a Joshua in the house that is going to take the people of God in to the fullness of God to the fire of God, to the power of God, to the anointing of God, to the glory of God. I declare that, Father, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, the people will come, and the people will receive, and the people will receive the impartation of the anointing of God. And, Lord, we will walk out of this house every time we come together, and we will say, surely it has been good to be in the presence of the Lord. And, Father, as I agree with my family right now, we serve notice on the kingdom of darkness, and we serve notice on the pits of hell that there 
is no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. We declare that we will walk in favor and we will walk in fire and we will walk in the power of the anointing of the Most High God and that we shall see the sign. And, the, and we declare that out of the ministries of this house, Lord, the jail ministries and the hospital ministries and the retirement center ministry, God, I declare, and even the street ministries, we shall see the harvest come from the people's labors in the house of God and we decree it to be so this hour and this day in the name of Jesus let the worshipers arise let the praisers arise let the warriors arise let the strong in the mighty in the name of Jesus arise by the word of God somebody give God a praise and a thanks and a shout no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall stand. A thousand shall fall at our right hand. Ten thousand. Uh, 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 a thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. But it shall not come nigh our dwelling. Psalms 91 says. And Father, I loose this word. I declare there is peace in the hearts and the minds of the family members of the glorious house of the people of Praise Worship Center today. Father, I declare peace set on the hearts, peace set on the families. I say peace set in the households. Father God, even on the couch and the TV and the chairs, let peace rest everywhere in the house, Father God. I decree it on the people in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, in this world, you can have peace. <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to say tribulation, didn't you? Somebody say, in this world, I'm going to have peace. In the name of Jesus. Anybody got anything else to do? I, right now, I'm feeling pretty clear. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Brother Dante. Yes. Well, my kids are gone. So, uh. God just laid this on my heart. You know, not only physical rest for them, but you know, they drive a pretty good sized truck back and forth. And now making this trip down to Mayo. But even before they sell it, God laid this on my heart. I know we bring our tithes and offerings, but. Um, would we be opposed to maybe try to help them with the fuel cost a little bit to get them down there? You know, just to alleviate some of that, the, the expense of the fuel, because God only knows it probably gets more expensive the further south you go. So if you find it in your heart, how about we put our tithes and offerings in one basket and just a nice love offering in the other basket for them? we do that? Amen. Father God, we just ask you, Lord, to bless this financial gift, not only to the pastors, but to your house, God. Lord, let it multiply. Let it be a blessing for this house. And Lord, we ask that you will bless each and every one that gives. And Lord, bless those that can't give in one way or another. Lord, we just love you and we want to magnify your name with our gift in the name of Jesus amen hey Haley uh, come here and grab this one you hold one and let brother Dante hold the other come on church oh wait 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 our scriptures my our offering scriptures can you do that yet How many, can, can anybody raise your hand and testify softly that how many of y'all, has anybody yet experienced the open window of heaven blessing moving in your life? Yes or no? If not yet, get ready. Because I'm telling you, it's just happening. I will go, I'll say this. How many of y'all know I've been praying for God to give us a modular building? I hadn't told you this, but we've been working on it all week long. There's one that may be already coming our way. We 
got to have some, we got to cross some T's and dot some I's. I got to get with the building permits for, is this the craziest thing with y'all? We are in Graceville, churches in Holmes County. I got to go to Bonifay to get, to deal with the, biz, the building. But can I tell y'all, how many of y'all would be excited to see a fellowship hall in the children's church right out there? I told the Lord in prayer about two weeks ago, I said, now God, there's nothing too hard for you. And my kids, our kids need it. And so I'm here to tell you, it's working in the wind. We've already got one yes. We need four more yeses and we get a, then we got to move it. But how many of you understand? A free, somebody say free is always good. You know, they, they don't even give you free air to pump up your cars no more. You're tired. But I'm just telling you, y'all be praying. We need four more yeses. One's already here, and we're going to see the manifestation. I wanted to hesitate, and I was going to hold it before it was all done, but I think I'm just going to release it. Today says we're going to believe in faith. Amen. So if we got our scripture up, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse there, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. I don't hear y'all saying it with me, but okay. I, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be what? Room enough to receive it. Let's go to the other one, Luke 6, 38. Give. Or Luke 6, 38. Just one more. I'm, oh, it, okay. It changed and I didn't see it. Sorry. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Like Brother Mike was preaching about a while ago. Press down. Bless you. Oh, my, Brother Mike. Y'all yeah, better pray. I feel another. Mm -hmm. Press down. Shaking together and running over shall what? Men give to your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it shall be what? Measured to you again. Now, let me help some of you real, 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 real quick. Learn this now. Learn this quick. If somebody wants to bless you, don't be ignorant and say, no, brother, I'm sorry. I can't receive that. You know why? You're robbing their blessing. You're, you're, de you're destroying their act of faith or their step of faith. I had to learn it when we was at King's Table Worship Center. One thing that I will all be, always be grateful to Mike and Cheryl said, second time I'm talking about them, damn, maybe you need to call them. So, but one, the second thing that I'll always be grateful is he taught me to receive blessings in faith. My daddy told me, he said, boy, you work for everything you get, you get everything you work for. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, that ain't so. Why? Because pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give to your bosom. Why? Because you're a king's kid, and the kingdom of the king is not broken. The kingdom of the king is not bankrupt. So if God says give you, and you give, you receive, and you say thank you, Lord, and you pray bless on Why? Because you're walking under an open window of heaven. Luke 6, 38 is being fulfilled. I don't care if somebody gives you 10 or $20. We was walking through Tractor Supply one day, and little Jace was with me, and he said, Papa, look at there, and there's $10 laying on the floor. I said, pick it up. Nobody was around. There wasn't a soul that looked like they dropped it. There was just me and him. I said, Lord, just bless you with $10. I don't know where it's coming. Oh, okay, well, I'll let y'all marinate on that this week. Somebody say, press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men... Give to my bosom. Amen. So, Father, we bless this offering. We bless this giving. We thank you for the obedience of your servants. Father, for all that they do. For the worship this morning. For the celebration in honor of you today. Lord, all that we do in this house, we do for your glory. And this offering is just part of that worship. And, Lord, I pray a hundredfold blessing. Lord, I know your word says 30, 60, and 100, but I'm claiming a hundredfold for everybody in this house. Why? Because I believe you are more than enough God, not barely enough, not just enough, but more than enough God. So, Father, we thank you for the open window of heaven blessings that you receive, that you pour out on us that we receive, and we thank you for what you have yet to receive from your blessings and your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now bring your offering and your tithes, and we say increase.
Father, how many of you know the King is alive this morning? Let me leave you with this one thing. How many of y'all, how many of y'all like funnies? I was watching Brother Robert Morris on TV the other night. Let, let me help y'all real quick. I know, I, I know y'all got to go. And I appreciate your time and your faithfulness, especially with the rain and the, and the weather. But you're going to get out and go to work tomorrow if the weather's bad. And thank you for getting out and coming to church today with the weather bad. Brother Robert Marsh was preaching. If you don't know anything about him, he's a Baptist preacher that I believe is spirit-filled. And uh, are you asking or saying? He is, okay. Well, you kind of say like he is. <laughs> like he's... But he was preaching this. This y'all Sit down for just two minutes. Uh, Brother David, you're okay to stand. Brother... Actually, both of Brother Davids are standing. How about that? Man, we got two Davids standing in this house. We need two Goliaths. We got two Davids standing. Where's the two Goliaths that are going down? I know. I know, yeah, yeah, you're, uh, I ain't going down with no rock from no sling. Anyway, Brother Robert Morris was preaching on the Holy Spirit to his church. He's trying to, he's trying, now watch this real quick. I know you got to go. This is a Baptist church, and y'all know how they believe, right? On the, on, the, on the Spirit of God, on the Holy Spirit. And he's trying to teach them, but he's doing an awesome, excellent job. Uh, and he preaches, he says, he said he was, he was going to quote the scripture where when Jesus was baptized in the water, <clears throat> And he come up out of the water. The Bible said that uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord had descended like a dove upon him. Y'all remember that scripture? And he's telling this story. And he said that what he had, he said this preacher was, was doing that. And he said he had an old building that they had a hole in the roof of the ceiling. And so he took this little boy and he said, look, I'm going to get you. He said, I'm going to give you this dove. And he said, when I say that the Spirit of the Lord descended upon Jesus like a dove, he said, you throw that dove down the hole in that roof and let him come down in the sanctuary. The little boy said, I can do that, Pastor. So he got to preach and he come to that scripture. And he said, and the spirit of the Lord descended upon Jesus like a dove. Nothing happened. And he said, I said the spirit of the Lord come down upon him like a dove. Nothing happened. Third time he said, I said the spirit of the Lord descended upon him like a dove. The little boy stuck his head out the hole in the roof and looked down at the preacher. He said, hey, preacher, he said, the cat ate the dove. You want me to throw the cat down? <laughs> that was Brother Robert Morris's joke about the Spirit of God. So now I got you laughing. Laughter does good like a medicine. Stand to your feet, shake somebody's hand, love people as you leave this wonderful place. Listen, when you leave this house, you go tell somebody. Like Brother Mike said, y'all go tell somebody God's moving. I'm looking for the day God's going to slay people in the spirit and people are going to be running and shouting at